Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Uh, I haven't ever spoken in this part of the chapel. I've always been up there. And this is uh, slightly more intimidating. <laughs> but uh, seeing your friendly faces makes it less so. Um, today I'm going to talk about one of the big bummers in the Apostles' Creed. Uh, but I think it still has really great value for us. Today we're going to be talking about Christ's suffering. Uh, we hear the line, he suffered under Pontius Pilate. Um, and so, uh, let's see, four years ago, I started attending a church where we said the Apostles' Creed regularly, or one of the three major creeds, and I had never really said it in church. And uh, some of you might be there too. This might be new to you. Uh, welcome. It's good for us. Um, one of the first things I thought was like, why do they include this man? Pontius Pilate in this creed. This like sacred holy thing that we believe in, it, it talks about our faith, the core tenets, uh, you know, like this is what we believe. And it includes a man that executed our Lord. Um, an evil man by all accounts. Um, uh, and maybe not evil, but at least a bureaucrat that wasn't very good, right? Um, and so I started thinking about that. Why is Pontius Pilate in this, what, 1,700-year-old creed? Um, it's old. I can't quite date it, but I think it's around there. And I think the first thing that we have to remember, this is a historical document, right? The first reason they put Pontius in there is to date what happened. Uh, Pontius was a real historical figure that we can point to as Christians and see when this occurred. Uh, we know that he was a governor in the 5th century, uh, or the, the 1st century, um, in the Roman province of Judea, and he served for about 10 years under the emperor Tiberius. And it's important that the apostles understood that we would need some sort of proof of what happened. So I think they put him in there first for that. He's a public figure that we can understand and now look back historically and say, yeah, this happened. Um, Jesus really did suffer and die. Um, thanks for the sound effects. And um, I think the second reason that Pontius is in here um, is because um, we, we have this reminder through here that there's no human power or authority over Jesus. Jesus submitted to suffering under Pontius Pilate. Um, we see that in the Gospels. He says, you know, whatever authority has been given to you has been given from God in heaven. Um, and we see this in Romans 8, 37 to 39, where we're told no power or dominion or authority uh, would have power over us, right? And so I think Pontius is in there second for that. Um, because we, we have to remember that Jesus has ultimate authority and dominion and power forever and ever, amen, right? And, and Pontius Pilate couldn't strip that from Jesus by causing him to suffer. Um, instead, Jesus willingly let Pontius Pilate do this to him because he knew it was the will of God the Father, I think the, ins the second important thing about this passage of the creed is this connection to Jesus' humanity. Suffering is inherently a human act. Um, we are reminded over and over in the Apostles' Creed of the reality that Jesus was both fully divine and fully man. Um, we're told that he was conceived, he suffered, he was he crucified, he died. Any resurrection. Uh, Jesus died in the flesh, right? And we have to remember that Jesus' humanity gives our humanity value and worth because God himself came to be human. Um, this suffering is, is an important reality of that because it's something that we experience on a daily basis. Uh, how many of you did something maybe silly like just stub your toe this morning? And that's like the greatest suffering that you experience in those three seconds. But we also have much more real suffering, right? Deeply emotional suffering. Um, we've been hurt by people, by others. Some of you might have uh, pain that has followed you your whole life. Physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. This is real stuff. Um, and Jesus isn't some like nice attitude, right? He really came, he really embodied flesh, and he really suffered. 
And we have dignity in our own suffering because Jesus had dignity in his suffering. And we know that suffering has value because God has given it value. We know that Jesus died in the flesh so that he could condemn sin in the flesh, which infects us. Um, And we, we know that's an essential doctrine. We can't believe that this is some sort of metaphor. Jesus didn't metaphorically come back um, and, and suffer. He really did. He felt real pain. He was scourged. He was beaten. He was pulled through town with a cross on his back, uh, spit in and mocked. And we know that that happened in the flesh. And I think we can all identify with that in some way. So he puts this in there, the writers of this creed, to remind us that Jesus was human and that we ourselves are human and that we know suffering. It's important to remember that his physical death and resurrection also predates our physical death and resurrection. The human body is essential to Christian dogma. We cannot separate our humanity from our spirit. We're not spiritual creatures, right? We're not angels. But we're physical ones, and we know that our physical body will also come back in the life to come. We're told that we believe in the real resurrection, right? And that Jesus is the firstborn of the dead. Not the lastborn, but the firstborn. The last thing I think that Jesus is suffering, and I think the most important part of this, is that Jesus' suffering shows us a model for our own suffering. Human nature um, often pushes us to believe that we should run from suffering and that it's bad and evil. We should avoid it at all costs. Um, I mean, really, we all do this, right? We all pick the easy way out at times. Um, From anything like having a hard conversation uh, to staying up late to finish homework, I know that we've all gone to bed and told ourselves the lie that we'd wake up early to finish it. (laughs) But even bigger things, right? We give in to suffering all the time, um, or the lack of suffering. We run from it because it is painful. But the reality is that Jesus shows us that suffering is not inherently bad and evil, but rather it's a process of conjoining ourselves to the divine God. We should embrace our own suffering with the same mind as Christ Jesus, knowing that by suffering, um, we are taking on the cross ourselves. We see this picture beautifully in the gospel when Simon the Cyrene takes Jesus' cross for him. Because Jesus also tells us in the gospels to pick up our own cross and carry it. And I know you all have one. Addictions and and pain. Uh, Maybe it's something that you couldn't help at all, right? And it feels so unfair. Lord, why was I born with this? Or why... Did someone do this to me when I didn't have a choice about it? Why have you put this suffering on me, Lord? I can't answer that for you, right? It might seem that there's no meaning or value to your suffering and that you go through it every day silently um, and that one day it will end with our own death. And maybe that, that is how it goes, right? Maybe we carry our suffering silently for most of our lives without people knowing or truly being able to sympathize and understand with it. But the reality is that Jesus is familiar with that pain. We know that we have a great high priest who suffered, and because of his suffering, he knows our suffering. He calls us to it, and he didn't come to release us from pain, but to give us deep meaning in it. He cares for our suffering and knows it himself. We see it in Gethsemane where he prays, Lord, please take this cup from me but not my will, but yours be done. We know that human suffering isn't in vain and that Jesus shows us that it is possible to endure suffering as unto the Lord and that we should view this suffering as an act of becoming more like Jesus Christ himself because we know that with the suffering comes the death and ultimately the resurrection. So then how do we suffer as unto Christ? I think it's easy to say, right, like, okay, you're suffering, it has meaning, good luck, (laughs) Uh, but I don't think that's it. We have to know how to do this. I think Jesus gives us a beautiful example, like I said, in Gethsemane. We should pray about this. We should present it to the Lord. Our suffering 
Uh, it doesn't have to be eternal. Maybe the Lord will bless you and, and relieve it. Maybe he won't, and either is fine, right? But the first is to come to the Lord in prayer and to tell him about your suffering. He knows about it, but he cares about listening to you and your suffering too. Not my will, but yours be done. Submit our pain to God and ask why, but also know that it is part of the human experience, and if he chooses in his infinite wisdom to continue to let us endure this, it is for good reason. Jesus knew his suffering was to redeem humanity. Maybe yours is to be conformed to that image. Maybe it's to help someone else conform to that image. I'm not sure what it is. But we can ask for relief, but if we don't receive it, know that God is near to us in our suffering and he isn't distant and that he's familiar with it. We also need to acknowledge to God that even though we suffer, we know it's not bad, but it's also what unites us to him. Finally, I want to give you an example of a great Christian, right? We're all familiar with Peter, the apostle, uh, the disciple, denied Jesus three times. Um, Jesus uh, loved Peter, but he also condemned him, uh, told him to get behind him, called him Satan. But Peter, I think, is like this, the apostle and the disciple that most reminds us of ourselves because he flees from suffering at every chance he gets. Um, in Gethsemane, he goes to sleep because he's tired. Uh, he, uh, the, the very next day, denies Jesus three times. Um, but then we have this story in church tradition. It's not in the Bible. But later on, uh, we know that Peter was martyred. Um, and at the time, we believe Peter lived in Rome. Um, and he started to hear rumblings that they were coming after him. And being the man that he is, the man that hates suffering, uh, Peter began to flee Rome for his own life because he didn't want to suffer death. He wanted to keep living. And on his way out of Rome on the road, uh, the story goes that Peter saw a vision of Jesus walking back to Rome the other way. And he stopped and he said, Quo vadis domine, which means, my Lord, where are you going? And Jesus looked to him and he said, I'm going to Rome to be crucified again. The reality then uh, sinks into Peter and he realizes that the only way that he can truly become like Christ is to do the same. To turn around and return to Rome so that he can be crucified uh, just as his Lord was. Uh, the story even goes that he was then crucified upside down, inverted, right? I don't, this is so like deep bummer stuff, right? Ah, oh, Wesley, where's the good news? Where's the good news that my suffering is going to be gone because Jesus loves me? It's coming, right? It's coming in eternity, but here on earth, we will never know that. And you can't seek that. You can't like flee after this God of like bliss because it's going to leave you suffering for eternity, right? If we submit now to the suffering, we will be united with Christ in heaven where there is no suffering. Because Jesus, while he is concerned about our temporal existence, he's really concerned about our eternal existence. So I tell you to be like Peter in that instance. I ask you, right, to look for Jesus in his exit from Rome on earth and say, where are you going? And from there you have the option, do I follow Christ into my own suffering or do I flee from it? That's the bad news today, right? But the good news is that the resurrection is around the corner. Um, I'm not going to spoil that for whoever's talking about it because... That's not fair, right? That's, <laughs> that's not what I'm talking about today. Um, so please don't be like eternally bummed out by this. But <laughs> friends, know that there isn't Sunday without Friday. Jesus had to suffer and die for us. And because of that, we're called to do the same.
Thank you. Have a good day.